I have received a really good question from Vinay Kumar. And you say, how to observe the thought? I always end up with identifying with it. Before I know it, I would have already been identified with thought. And if I understand your question correctly, what you're saying is that you have this, um, you are aware that there's no separate self. And you are aware that the one believing itself to exist is just thought. But you keep having those assumptions about everything and you have like this reaching out and kind of like pulling in what you see. If I ask you to look around right now and you look at things around you, you can feel that there's kind of like a darting out from your eyes, darting out to something and grasping to something and kind of pulling it in as a something. So so that is a plant and, and that is, you know, a garden. And that is, so there's this constant identifying with with my surroundings and with, with, with what I see. Um, and on top of that, there's an opinion about everything, <laughs> about everything. It's a nice plant, it's a nice garden. Um, it's raining, that's not nice. Um, and 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 I know what you mean. I know what you mean. If if that is what you mean, obviously. Um, and your question is, how do I, how do I, you know, stop that mind chatter that is just happening all the time? How do I stop that? Ooh, breathe, breathe. The biggest illusion that we have about our thoughts is that we need to do something about it, you know? That just because you have a thought about something, we think that we need to do something. That's part of the ego. That's part of the of that push-pull, you know? Um, if you think about tomorrow, then you start to plan what you want to do about tomorrow. And then you think, oh, I shouldn't think about what I want to do tomorrow. I better want to wait and see what happens. Oh, then I shouldn't think about it. So, So you keep reacting to the thoughts that are coming up. That's the biggest delusion. You don't need to do anything. You don't need to do anything. Whenever a thought comes, a thought can just happen. And that's it. You don't need to act on it. You don't need to do anything. Just like when you hear a sound, you don't need to do anything. If you smell something, you don't need to do anything. If you taste something, you don't need to do anything. The thought is the same thing. You don't need to react to it. It can be on that level that the seen is simply the seen and the heard is simply the heard and the cognized, the thoughts are simply thoughts. That's it. So what I would recommend you to do is to find out when you're when you're catching yourself in the thoughts and you're catching yourself in believing in the thoughts. Because that's another thing. We tend to believe what the thoughts are telling us, even though it's, it's like, oh my God, the drama, the drama that thoughts can, <laughs> the avalanche of drama that thoughts can push yourself into. Um, you don't need to believe it. You don't need to believe it. The thoughts and the ego loves drama, loves it, loves it. It's like you're, you know, creating your own reality show. Uh, where, you know, she's wrong and he's right and, you know, all of that. Yeah. You don't really need to believe any of it. Don't need to believe any of it. It's just thoughts. Just like if you smell a rose, um, you might have, mm, this is really nice smell. But for somebody that's allergic, it's not. Or taste a strawberry and go, mm, really, really nice strawberry. But for somebody that's allergic, really not. So, so there's not an intrinsic value to anything. It's just the mind that is putting that intrinsic value into things and, and, and emphasizing and saying that this is how it is. It's not. It's not. So if you can keep that awareness about you, noticing the thoughts happening, noticing the urge that the thoughts, you know, kind of want you to do something about it, and then, then looking at that um, urge that you have, you don't need to do anything. You can allow a thought to be there. You can allow a th- an, an urge to be there. Can you be in a body where you have that urge and, and just be with it, not doing anything about it, just being with it? It's also what, 
if you've been to meditation classes, um, in some meditation practices, when you kind of like feel a pain in your body or you feel that your leg starting to sleep or then you're, you're um, asked to look into it, you know, look into that being with it, um, that urge that you have for it to stop or to change or to be different, um, which is mind made. Can, can you be in a body where that urge is present without acting on it? Is that possible? 